Hey guys, on today's episode, I'm gonna to talk to you about what is the right way and the wrong way to build a pit. I mean, even, is there a wrong way to build a pit? Anyway, stay tuned, we're gonna get right into this. You're listening to the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. Hey guys, Frank Cox here. Uh, wanted to jump on here real quick and talk to you about uh, a subject for new guys to building pits. Um, you know that I remember when I first built my very first pit and all the research I was doing and on these forums and on these websites that were talking about how to this, how to that, and uh, you know even just general metalworking and stuff, I had a lot of questions. I mean, I knew some stuff, don't get me wrong, about like just general metalworking and and uh, you know that kind of stuff. And I knew a little bit about thermodynamics and airflow just because of my trade and uh, my experience in that trade. But uh, you know, I really didn't know like I never cooked a brisket. I never cooked a pork butt. I never cooked, you know, chicken. Well, I mean, I, I, I'd never even seen a brisket until I, uh, at least not in its, you know, butcher form up until I, uh, you know, bought one, took it home, got in the Traeger cookbook and did Bruce's brisket recipe that's in the uh, Traeger cookbook. And uh, I, I remember, you know, the first time I was cutting up that brisket, all the questions, you know, and then, you know, cooking a brisket. And then, well, that cooker was a pellet cooker. It was a Traeger. So there was no pit mastery really to it other than turn it on, set it for its temperature, make sure it stays full of pellets and clean the thing, right? So I, I, uh, I didn't know a lot of stuff going into this. So what I did is I, like I said, I was on all these forums. I was, I was pouring through websites. I was reading these how-to articles, you know, that everybody else had put up before me. And uh, I, I never, like, I had all these questions, but I never really even knew what questions I was asking and, gen you know, genuinely knew what questions I was asking. What the heck's a baffle plate? And I remember, you know, going into that, there wasn't even, like, the throat opening. Alley Rat 58 on our forum is the one that coined that, and the reason he coined that term was because he had to ask me when he was when he was helping me build the calculator he did the website design and he had to ask me what are we going to call that because we always say the firebox to cook chamber opening and i don't want to have this big long title on that part of the barbecue pit calculator so what are we going to call it and i said i don't know what do you want to call it he said throat and i said all right we'll call it the throat i don't know if ben's watching or listening to this but uh you know his name in real life is ben he's badass internet guy anyway uh, pardon my French there. But anyway, he he uh, he's the one that coined that term. And I didn't have that term to fall back on when I was going at it. I was trying to explain the opening and where it's at, you know, in, in this long, drawn-out term. So I said all that to say this. You're brand new to smoker building. You're brand new to maybe uh, cooking on a stick burner pit or uh, some kind of a offset or, or vertical reverse flow or a vertical pit or whatever it is, how do you know what questions to ask? How do you know like what things are called? What's the right way? What's the wrong way to build a pit? Okay, so let's just get down into it. I'm going to tell you the secret answer to that question. Are you ready for it? This is really heavy, really big stuff. You ready? Okay, here it goes. There's Wait, let me get a cup drink of my coffee here. Hang on. I got to wet the whistle before I say it because it's so huge. Okay, hang on. Okay, got my drink of coffee. I'm ready to go. There is no wrong way to build a pit. Yep, Frank Cox said it right here today, whatever the date is. I said it. Okay, here at Smoker Builder HQ, where we pride ourselves on everything technical and how to about pits, smokerbuilder.com. Okay, I said it, there's no wrong way to build a pit. Matter of fact, I think I'm gonna title this episode that because there isn't, right? No, I won't title it that because then I'm giving away the secret, right? Pit master secrets, that's what we specialize in here, okay? So there is no wrong way to build a pit. Now, this is where it gets eh, a little bit deeper, okay? There are best practices to building a pit. That's really the secret, okay? So 
when we're, when we're getting in there and we're learning all this terminology and we're trying to figure out all of these questions and terminology and all of these things, don't stress out about it, right? It's, it's, all it is, is it's, it's an oven that burns charcoal or wood or in worst cases, gas. We don't like to do burn gas in a smoker. Um, it could even burn pellets, right? It's, it's just an oven. That's all it is, okay? And so what we're doing is we're, we're manipulating the fuel source, the heat source, and the, the temperature in that thing. And we're using Mother Nature, in the case of uh, no electronics, we're using Mother Nature and her laws of physics and uh, heat transfer and everything else to make this thing go. Now, pit mastery is mastering that process, right? So, so we often, we, so not to throw rocks at anything here, well, maybe a little bit, but general consensus in, in the newcomer's perspective of what is a pit master. Well, pit master is a guy that's been on TV and won all those trophies. A pit master is the guy that has this huge rub and sauce company or this huge smoker company or the, no. Pit master is a guy that knows how to run a pit. He has mastered the process of running that smoker, his smoker, not everyone's smoker, his smoker, right? There's no golden trophy that you're going to get by, by achieving thin blue smoke, right? Well, you might get some somewhere, but there's not like a generally worldwide prestigious award for knowing how to achieve thin blue smoke in your smoker. There's not one for who builds the best bark, right? I mean, there is trophies for competition barbecue, right? That's really where it's at. Maybe even restaurateur, uh, you know, organizational trophies of such, you know. But honestly, getting right down to it, the big secret, right, to how, how is there a right and a wrong way to build a pit, the big secret is no. There's best practices. What works for you, what works for me, might be two different things, okay? However, we're dealing with physics and all that stuff and, and heat transfer and combustion and airflow management and all these different things in that smoker, that's really what sets us apart. If we can take a and have a fire off to the side, you know, Aaron Franklin has, has like, it's amazing what he's accomplished, okay? And everybody calls me and they want to know, how do I build a Franklin style pit, okay? I get that question like three, four, five times a week. I, I love the question. I love engaging in this exact conversation with people that call me to, to, to know what to do. But honestly, what works for him works amazing for him, right? It might work great for other people that mimic his process. But look here, if what works for you is to take a barrel outside like a lot of old school barbecue shops before barbecue was cool and build a fire out there, right? And then there's this big bed of coals out there, right? And every so many hours, you got to go out there or every couple of hours, you got to go out there, take a shovel, scoop up a big old load of coals, bring them inside, throw them in the fire box to keep your fire going. But your barbecue is amazing and you like the result you got, go for it. I love it. I'll eat it. I love it, right? That's old school stuff. I have a deep appreciation for that. Um, however, there's better fire management practices than that. It's not wrong. It works. It's what you love. It's your hobby. It's fun. You like the end result, right? But there are better ways of doing it, right? That's what we learn here on this on this uh, podcast and uh, what Smoker Builder tries to teach you. So that's where we get into like, you know, for, for you to come in and and as a brand new barbecue guy, and for you to have to like discern the wizardry ways of how Aaron Franklin or Frank Cox or Darian Cosmo or Big Mo Quezon or any of these big barbecue personalities, how, how they manage their fire, right? I just, I mean, it, it's just better to start off with good, grounded, simplified practice and then deviate from that with what works for you. So anyway, I hope that helps you guys. Uh, this is one of my shorter podcasts. Um, if you, if you want to learn more about where to start, 
how do I get into this thing called pit building? How do I get into this? How do I become a smoker builder? How do I become a pit master? You can do two things. First, go all the way back to the beginning of the pit of the pit master secrets podcast back when it used to be called the barbecue culture podcast, right? Episode one, I tell my story on the first two episodes. Then we get into some technical, right? But it's technical stuff that's boiled down to simple, simple, you know, language, as simple as I can put it. Start there and go through, right? The second thing you can do is go to barbecue, or I'm sorry, smokerbuilder.com and click on the button that says forums, okay? Smokerbuilder.com is a blog. You can read through all the blog posts from all the way back in 2010, but you can also get on uh, the forum there and you can go through the forums board. It's just as old and there's so many cool people that have come and gone and been on there and still on there, right? You can, you can talk to me, you can talk to Tom, you can talk to Big T. All these guys have all these different names under Pete Maz. Um, you can get, you know, Rod Crafter. You can get in their head. Find out what it was when they came on board, what, what, where they started. Um, you know, some of those guys has been cooking barbecue their whole life, but they never had a standardized system behind it. And they just came on there and they started to standardize their system and their process. And now, now they have mastered their pit. And the third thing you can do, break out there and build your own pit. That's the big one. So I, I encourage everyone at some point to build your own smoker. And the reason I tell you to build your own smoker is because it will literally unlock some of these things I talk about. Like, like you'll get in there. Some people always say, I can't learn by reading or listening. I got to do it. I can watch a video three times a day, you know, 10 times a week or whatever. And, and uh, I, I can't, I can't get it. I have to get out there and strike an arc. I got to cut it. I got to, I got to build it. I got to run it myself. Right. So going through that process will, will literally unlock mechanical things in your mind that will help you see what the air's doing. That's how it worked for me. It's like climbing through the ductwork with the air. You know what I mean? It's to, un to feel it in each spot. To, to be able to understand and interpret what's happening in this corner. Whenever it goes around that corner, what is actually happening there? You know, turbulation comes into effect, all these different things. Anyway, you can do that. You can get there when you're building a pit. It's a blast, trust me. Okay, so anyway, guys, that's it for this episode of the, of the Pitmaster Secrets podcast. And uh, I thank you for watching or listening, whichever one you're doing. Um, this is our first episode we did with video. And uh, anyway, I'm excited for it to go up. But uh, hey, guys, this is Frank Cox signing off. See ya.